Hey everybody, it's Adam from Lucy Pixel. I am very happy you're here to join me. Before I start my art talk, I want to mention three things. Number one, every now and then, you might see a Halloween light shine on my face. That's just my notes on my iPad, all right? So that's the first thing. Second thing is, yes, I do have a cold. You can hear it in my voice. I do not sound this sexy normally, so enjoy it while it lasts. And number three, to my student, Jaime, who got me uh, the Kindio Cafe from uh, Colombia. He brought it, he, he's in Montreal right now, and he brought me this amazing box of coffee. I will never be able to drink boring ass Canadian coffee ever again. You are now bound to me. You are now my 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 sugar daddy, as far as that's concerned, because I'm going to be hitting you up for coffee any chance I get, because it's just absolutely phenomenal coffee. So thank you, Jaime, for that. With that said, what do I want to talk about today? I want to talk about love. More specifically, I want to talk about the love of art. In the past, I've spoken many times about doing what you love. Yes, you got to pay the bills. Yes, that's totally normal. Uh, I, you know, I've done jobs to pay the bills in the past, stuff that wasn't particularly fulfilling. I worked as a waiter for years. I've del When I was a kid, I delivered beer on one of those front-heavy, dumbass bicycles to, you know, to crack houses at 6 o'clock in the morning in the snow. I've done all of that crap too. I've had a lot of different types of jobs. But in the end, I've always been a very, very strong voice and advocate for doing what you love. Because by doing what you love, you find the endurance, you find the passion, you find the longevity to master something. And through mastery is where you find your truest success and your purest form of communication to the world around you, which really in the end is really what you want, right? You want to find a way to communicate and to connect with the world around you in the purest form that you know how. But the big question is, how do you do this on the long term? I'm turning 42 in a couple of weeks, all right? Yeah, healthy 40s. And I've been working professionally for over 20 years. I've been doing this for a very long time. I have not enjoyed every artistic job I've had by far. But here I am, all these years later, still as pa far more passionate an artist I am now than I ever was. Furthermore, I can look at you right in the face and without a shadow of doubt on my face say, I know in 50, 60 years, I'm going to be even more passionate about art than I am today. How can I say that and mean it and know this in my core that I'm going to be doing this for this long? How the hell do I maintain this much love for this long? Well, the reality is I don't love art all the time. I can't love art all the time, at least not in the superficial, you know, dream weaver type of, you know, you know, infatuation, airbrushy sense of the word. I don't love art in that fashion. To me, long-term love means, yes, you have many moments of infatuation. You have many moments of lust and passion in your life, of course. But there's also moments of normalcy. There's, mo there's, there's moments of disappointment. There's mom moments of depression. There's moments of discouragement. There's moments of, you know, boring old everyday stuff that everybody else experiences. Love is not 100% infatuation every single day. In fact, my God, would I, would I uh, burn out very quickly if I was trying to maintain that level of endorphin in my body? <laughs> I couldn't do it. So how do I maintain this close, passionate relationship with art every single day? It's not love, it's not passion in and of itself. The act of drawing and painting is not what satisfies me and keeps me going every single day, all the time. The act of drawing shapes and working out different compositions and playing with colors and textures and edges and all these different things is very satisfying a lot of the time. But the rest of the time, it's everything else that art brings me that keeps me in love with art. Art is not just about drawing and painting. Art, to me, is a bridge. It's a center hub, an island, where every, all of my other passions around the world merge and meet and congregate. I have as much passion for body language and dance and quantum physics and psychology and nature and animals and plants and you name it, as I do about art. I don't spend every single day going, oh, 
this is the most satisfying brushstroke I've ever, oh, and that one too. Oh my God, they just keep, of course not. That's unrealistic to think that way. Yet, when we talk about the word love, this is what we think. We think we have to be on our 100% drive 24 hours a day. No. One of the reasons I love painting so much is every single time I take on a new project, every single time I take on a new painting, a new challenge, to me, the key word that keeps me seeking information and seeking knowledge is the word authenticity. When I'm painting something, I'm looking for authenticity. If I'm doing medieval culture, I want to bring, breathe medieval culture and knowledge into my work. If I'm doing a painting about a Viking, it's important to me to understand how a Viking would wear armor, why they would wear a belt around their waist to take the shoulder of the male off of their shoulders, how they would hold a shield. They wouldn't hold a shield like that. If they're holding a one-handed sword, they hold the shield close to them and put the sword in front of them so that they can keep people the F away from them and prevent themselves from getting injured. They don't leave themselves open for battle. To me, authenticity like that matters. When I have a student who knows, I have, I have students who are Fletchers, people who make bows, right? I have, I have one of my students that I'm, that I'm teaching right now is somebody who knows a lot about swords and he was teaching me a little bit about how to, you know, how to swing with a two-handed sword and how to prevent injury and how to prevent damage and all this kind of thing to the weapon. I have other students that are, you know, I had a student yesterday who was grilling me about anatomy and actually asked me some hard-hitting questions I couldn't even answer. I had to look up and figure out. Every one of these things is an excuse for me to get deeper knowledge, deeper authenticity in everything that I do. Art is giving me, is providing me with an excuse to seek out all of these different things, to expand myself, to know more. And every single time I learn about different things, I learn about business, I learn about advertising, I learn about anything, it helps to feed my art and my art helps to feed the world around me. The world becomes a more beautiful, interesting, detailed, specific thing to me that I can connect with and I can identify with and I can love as much as I love my art. The act of painting and drawing in and of itself is satisfying, and I do have love for it some of the time. But if that's all it was, I wouldn't keep coming back for it. But there's a second side to this. There's a second important perspective to have when it comes to love. And that is the understanding that it's not going to be all you know, you know, unicorns and rainbows every single day. Understand that sometimes your relationship with art is going to be kind of shitty. There's going to be days where things suck. You're going to be sick. Someone's going to fart. Somebody's going to, you know, look like shit. Somebody's hair isn't going to be perfect. Deal with it. That's real life. If you can love them when they look their shittiest, you can love them when they look their best. It's about a balance of both. If it was completely unrewarding, if the person just walked around like a slob and didn't take care of themselves and was just had a shitty attitude and was pessimistic and negative every day, well then, what's to love? But if somebody tries their best, but has good days and bad days, that's somebody you can keep around for the long term. And that, to me, is what art is. It, the, the, the potential for things to be wonderful is there, but when it's not, it's still worth it. It's still worth being with that person even when things are not great. The only time that a line is crossed and that you have to start reconsidering whether or not it's something healthy to pursue is if it starts to interfere with your health. If it's something that interferes with your long-term happiness. Sure, you know, my relationship with my wife sometimes can be pretty crappy. We get into these really... She's a strong-headed woman. I'm a strong-headed man and we get into these... We lock antlers sometimes once in a while, but that's, but we resolve it. But what if we couldn't resolve it? What if those conflicts got worse and worse and worse and could last for weeks and weeks? What if the, this, the mental struggle and anguish that I dealt with dealing with the simple day-to-day -day conflicts was so out of hands that it was putting me into a depression? Ah, warning sign, you're not in a relationship. <laughs> you're dealing with something completely different. This is not a loving relationship. That that balance of health has been crossed. If you're in a relationship, if your art is causing you to starve, if it's putting you in a state of depression because you're trying to pursue something but you're starving to death and your children are st starving to death and you're in a funk all the time and you feel discouraged and you feel down on yourself and you're walking around with this dark cloud over your eyes for weeks and weeks and months at a time, step back. That's not healthy. Either A, you need to reevaluate 
the direction, the artistic direction you want to take, or B, maybe you need to take step away from art altogether for a little bit. Okay? Maybe that's something you need to do. A good example is my mother. Single mother of three. She had nothing but a Bachelor of Fine Arts, which I've joked around in past art talks. Back the joke used to be a Bachelor of F all. A BFA would stand for a Bachelor of F all, right? Because there was no job to be had. There was no stability to be had. What did she do? She had no choice. She, she, she described to me how she painted. She had a canvas and she painted a cauldron with three pairs of legs that symbolizing her three kids. You know, six feet sticking out of the cauldron, symbolizing, if I keep doing this, I'm going to kill my kids. They're going to starve to death. So what did she do? She hung up her paintbrush. She went back to school. She got her high school math so that she could get her computer science degree. And she ended up becoming a computer scientist who later on, by, you know, as, as fate would have it, as the law of attraction works, she ended up being one of the only people who knew computer science and fine arts and ended up being one of the first people on earth to, computer, to, to produce computer graphics. High five to my mom, right? What goes around comes around. But she, had she pursued art at that particular point in her life, the bad would have greatly outweighed the good. It was not a smart move for her to, move it, to make at the time. She put that down, made a wonderful living for herself, shared her passion for art by designing a beautiful home and, you know, and raising three very happy kids and being able to support them and, you know, put me in sports and help me get through school and learn art and all that kind of stuff. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. Her sacrifice helped give me a life, a life that I'll be forever grateful for, which is why I'm sitting here talking to you right now. But had she pursued the relationship with art when it was damaging her and she said, screw this, it's art or nothing, I wouldn't be here today. She wouldn't be here today, okay? So she made the healthy decision. But as soon as she, as soon as she did have that stability, she immediately grabbed a canvas and she started painting again. She's got an entire, her entire downstairs floor of her house is full of huge canvases of paintings that she's painted. She never missed a beat. It was like she never hung up her, her canvas in the first place. That's how you have to evaluate your own interpretation of love and your relationship with it. It's not about loving that brush every single day. It's about everything else that that brush gives you. Why do I produce art? Why do I love art? Because it teaches me about the world around me and it gives me a means to communicate and connect with people all around the world. Like my dear friend Jaime from Colombia. I wouldn't have this cup of coffee, this delicious cup of coffee sitting here if it wasn't for my love of art, my love to communicate, my love to teach, and his love to learn. Hopefully you enjoyed my art talk today. I remember I have my Lucipixel online art mentorship, which of course I, I talk about every single time, right? That is what I love doing. And remember the Brush Sauce Theater art contest with myself and Tyler Edlin. Free art competition, big, huge community of people, free art critique and exposure to your artwork. So it's a win-win situation for everybody and a lot of fun. Uh, again, all the information is down below in the description. Remember to like and subscribe if you want to watch more, if you want to see more of these uh, art talks and go check out all my past art talks as well. There's a ton of them out there so you can enjoy that. And of course, happy painting. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.